Um, one of the common questions that came up last month um, that we just wanted to touch base with, with everyone, um, we sent out an email about this and uh, also um, uh, talked about it in our last uh, meeting, but a lot of you have asked how many priority goals should we have? And the answer was not really a, a definitive one, it just kind of depends. If you are looking at a developing a comprehensive program that's going to have a four-year implementation phase, maybe a stepped implementation where you're not going to implement it all next year, it may be you know, that there's parts that you're going to implement the year after that or the year after that, um, it would be real doable, we think, to have five to ten uh, priority goals per grade level, if not more. Um, and I think as we talk about this more today, you'll kind of have a better sense of that as we look, start looking at activities and delivery methods. Um, if you are thinking about doing a traditional school counseling program, in other words, you're just going to kind of keep the model you've always had, um, but you're just going to maybe add a little bit to it and take away a few activities, so you're just kind of tweaking it a little bit. Um, and if that's the case, usually with a traditional counseling program, we do a one-year implementation phase. And if that's the case, you probably, you know, if you're not really changing anything, you probably are not going to be able to handle more than one to three priority goals total next year. So, um, so as you're thinking about how many priority goals should we have, there's really two things to think about. One is are you going to be adding different delivery methods? If so, then you can handle more curriculum in your, in your program. And are you looking at a four-year implementation phase where you can kind of step the implementation a little bit, bit each year? Then you could handle more priority goals. But if you're just kind of in a minor way tweaking the school counseling program that you already have, um, you're just kind of, you know, cleaning it up a little bit, getting rid of some activities that maybe you don't need, adding some more targeted activities in their place. Um, then we're probably looking at one to three uh, priority goals. Remember, with our priority goals, those are choices that we want every single student in the building to make. And so when you get down to the, the activity level, you know, you're really having to put in some major activities so that every single student in the building will make the choice that you have identified as your priority goals. Um, also, one other thing to remember with your priority goals is that um, a lot of the times, multiple priority goals can be addressed through um, one activity. So let's say that you have one priority goal that students would uh, understand apprenticeship programs, um, you, or would choose to visit an apprenticeship program, and you have um, another priority goal that students would choose to visit a, um, a four-year college. Well, you could address that, um, teaching kids how to do that and why it's important. You could do both of those in one activity so where you talk about both apprenticeship programs and, and four-year colleges. So the answer to this question, how many priority goals should we have, is very subjective. It depends kind of on your broad implementation plan, how much energy you have. Um, it's, it's a very subjective question, so there's no one right or wrong answer on, on that. Um, if you are thinking about doing the Lilly implementation grant, remember Lilly in that grant application, which is competitive, um, they're looking for school classroom programs that are comprehensive, that are innovative, um, and so in that case, um, you're probably um, going to be looking at several priority goals. And those priority goals that you have will become the goals of your grant. So, you know, whatever, however you're designing this grant application, um, that will become, um, the priority goals will become the goals in your grant app. And then when you get down to the delivery method and activities in your grant application, well, we'll talk more about this next month, um, but as you're, as you're looking at the delivery methods and activities, those are going to be the activities in your grant app that you're asking for money to, to implement and to design and to you know, get them going. Um, and one other thing, and I'll talk about this a couple of times today, but we, we do want you to be thinking about using those grant funds to purchase time um, for program development, to train your program providers, to evaluate your program. 
So in other words, and I'll, I'll talk about this again in a few more slides um, farther up, but it, it's, we're, we want you to be thinking about, you know, even putting out um, like a notice to your teachers, you know, who would like a part-time job. And then the part-time job may be to develop curriculum around these, um, these four or five different uh, priority goals. So, um, so this, while we are not paying for an additional counselor with this, that then we'd have to figure out some way to sustain. It is possible to use that funding to design program that once developed would sustain on its own. So, so that's what we're thinking about and would like you to think about in terms of how to use those grant funds. Um, and then other things you can do as you're de designing your activities, just to kind of be thinking forward. Um, if you need meeting materials or meeting refreshments to as you're designing those activities, or if you need technical assistance, that's other another way that you can spend those Lilly funds. And and again, I say Lilly, but it could be funds from any funder, from your Chamber of Commerce to your Community Foundation or Lilly. So and this is something at this stage that we always talk about: is you know where do you find money to to develop up the program that you'd like to put in place. So, okay, so quick review. Um, these are the, the steps that we've completed already. You've got your steering team together, you've collected data, you've got your program goals, you work to expand your resources, you did your priority goals and your root causes, and the very last thing you did is you explored different delivery methods and different activities that you might put in place to address those root causes. So again, remember the root causes are the reasons why kids aren't making the choices that you want them to make. And now we're going to figure out, what. okay, what are we going to do about it? How, what activities do we need to put in place? And what delivery methods are we going to use to get those activities in place? So this month then we're talking about delivery methods and activities. And this is where everything kind of comes down to making some decisions now. We've studied data, we've explored best practices, we've gathered you know, new ideas from other school counselors, we've done all of our research and exploration, and now we're going to make decisions. So this month we'll be picking the delivery methods that you're going to use in the future, and you'll be um, identifying activities that you'll be providing for students. And then the last step is preparation. Um, we'll talk about that next month, but that's basically getting ready to implement the program that, that you've designed this year. Okay, I'm going to pause here real quickly. Let's see if anybody has any questions before we go on to kind of new stuff. So Debbie, any questions coming in? I see no questions, but I did get your record button started. Oh, you did? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yep. Did it give you a... Um, it gave you an audio? It was telling me it wouldn't record the audio, but you got the audio going? We'll see. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Debbie. Uh -huh. Wonderful. I won't have to do it twice. <laughs> good. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Uh -huh. Good, good. Okay, so let's now kind of look forward to what's coming up this month. So first of all, I'd like to do a little introduction of activities, just to kind of a little bit of a reminder, but just to get us thinking about these activities that we're going to put in place. So first of all, remember that activities that you're going to pick this month, they will not be picked just randomly, but they're going to be picked because these are activities that will address your root cause. So in that stage, you said, OK, kids aren't making the choices that we want them to make because they lack knowledge, they lack opportunity, or there's a personal social issue going in the place, going on. So now we're going to say, OK, what are we going to do about that? And we'll look down at activities to figure out what activities are we going to put in place to address these root causes. And again, they could be counseling activities, guidance activities, advocacy, management, probably not non-program activities, um, but they are most likely going to be guidance, counseling, or advocacy. And another way to look at this is that if they're lacking knowledge, you probably need to put a guidance activity in place. If they're lacking opportunities, you need to maybe put a guidance activity in place. Maybe it's going to be advocacy that you know we get all kids the opportunities. Um, and if it's a personal social issue that's getting in the way, then you're probably looking at putting a counseling activity in place. So the root cause will kind of um, uh, direct the, the activity that you're looking for. 
And then finally, once we take care of all these root causes, then kids will start to make the priority choice that we want them to make in it, that's listed as our priority goal. So we want you to always remember this pyramid that as you're just picking activities, that it's the activities are going to address a root cause. And when those root causes go away because of the activities you've done, then you'll begin to reach your priority goals. So, okay. Now, let's just a couple of definitions, just so we're all on the same page. Activities are the actions that you're going to take to address your goals, especially your priority goals, and more specifically, the root causes. So your priority goals are going to be supported by a lot of activities. Um, because remember, we want every single student in the building to make those choices that are identified in your priority goals. So, you know, as you're looking at activities, you may introduce a concept in one activity, you may reinforce it in another activity, then you may meet with students individually to make sure that they understand how that content applies to them. So always be thinking about, you know, it's not just a one-time sit and get activity, but how do we sequence activities so that students are more likely to begin making the choice that we want them to make. Um, you may do wonderful activity, a wonderful activity, but if students aren't moved to make a different choice, either we need more activities or different activities or something. It's got to be the kids have to be moved to make a different choice. Okay, your non-priority goals, we're, we're going to address those too, but probably just by a few activities or maybe even none at this point you may decide that this non-priority goal is something that we want to work on four years from now. So we're not going to do anything right now, but it's on our, it's on our, 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 our calendar to, to address that um, in, in a future year. So, um, so a lot of your non-priority goals, you know, we're not ignoring them. We're just not hitting them hard like we are with your priority goals. Okay. So, um, for your priority goals, remember activities are going to address the root causes. And just a reminder that there are four different kinds of school counseling activity types. Um, and probably the activities you're going to put in place are guidance, counseling, and advocacy. And then some activities, for some of your activities, you also will need behind the scenes activities to manage that, that activity. So for example, if you're doing a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one guidance appointments, you've got to send passes out to get the kids into your office. That would be a management activity to support that guidance activity. Okay, um, now this month there is going to be a pre-meeting uh, email to your council members um, because we want your council members to be thinking about activities um, before they get to your meeting. So um, I'll look at that, yeah, I'll look at that, that pre-meeting email in a second. Um, and then also, when we get into the, um, the manual, we've also created a little Excel spreadsheet um, that where you can um, just kind of write down all the activities that you're wanting to do, and then um, you address which school year that activity is going to fall into, which month of the school year, um, and, and we would suggest you only put in the, the months if it's next year. After that, just leave this blank and just put in the year. Um, does it occur more than once? Um, delivery method, I'll talk about those in a second. And then provider details, who's gonna be this? Who's gonna provide this activity? Mrs. Smith, the Kiwanis Club, Franklin College, you know, how's that, how's that gonna work? So, okay, so that's just a tool that we have to help you kind of get all your activities organized. And then you can sort these, so you can sort them by year, you can sort them by delivery method um, um, or by provider. Um, okay, so okay, so that is kind of just a real quick snapshot of activities. The one thing I want you to remember there above everything else is that activities address root causes. It's not just random, you know, we've always done this, so let's do it again. Um, it's not just, you know, this is fun, I like doing group counseling, so I'm just going to do it again. Um, it's, it's addressing the root causes. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, at looking at program design. So here's as we're putting together the program now. So we're making decisions about how this program is going to be all fit together. Every time we come up with an activity, 
there's three things we need to determine about that activity. One is, when is it going to happen? So we need to make sure that activities are sequenced. Um, for example, if you're going to do a presentation on how to design a four-year high school course plan, you want to do that before you actually have the kids develop their four-year high school course plans. So when is the implementation date? Have everything nice and sequenced. And then what delivery method are you going to use? Is this going to be a counselor-generated activity? Or is it going to be a teacher advisor that's going to implement the activity or a community member? So what is the delivery method? And then who exactly is going to be the provider? Is this going to be you know, Mrs. Smith? Is it going to be the ninth grade, ninth grade advisors? Is it going to be the counselor? Is it going to be the Chamber of Commerce? You know, who's actually providing this activity? And um, so those are the three things that have to be decided um, for each of your activities. I see I spelled activity wrong. <laughs> I'll fix that. Um, OK, so now, if you're planning on doing a traditional school counseling program, then you'll only have one delivery method. It will just be the school counselors. Um, and the provider then would be you know, Mr. Smith or Ms. Jones or all the counselors. So it, we, the, all the providers would be you know, the counselors. So OK, so that's kind of what we're doing. We want to identify activities get them in sequence, decide what the delivery method is going to be, and who the provider is. OK, so let's now review a little bit about delivery methods. Um, Counselor-generated delivery method. So for each of your activities, you're going to pick one of these delivery methods. Is it going to be delivered by counselors? So that would be kind of traditional. Is it going to be delivered by a teacher advisor? And I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, and again, with, with advisory programs, you know, those advisors, like in, in the program that I designed um, when I was in the schools, which, which I think was probably the best thing I ever did as a school counselor because it provided such great services for kids. But the, your advisors who, you know, instead of having a ratio like a counselor does of 1 to 350 or whatever your ratio is, we've gotten those ratios down to 1 to 15, 1 to 12. And the advisors can present group guidance lessons. They can facilitate projects where the students have to apply the lessons um, to a real world you know, issue, a real world uh, problem that, that they're addressing in a project. Um, they can meet with students individually to help them apply the lessons that they learn in group guidance. Um, for example, in, in our school, um, every the first advisor period after the day that report cards came out, our advisors um, started meeting with students for quick appointments, you know, 10, 15 minutes, to talk with them about goal setting. And then they set a goal um, that was after a group guidance lesson on goal setting. But then individually, the advisors set a goal with each of their 15 students. Um, and then they monitored that goal um, throughout the next marketing period. So, and then there can be, like, um, you know, kind of activities on uh, number four there that are just um, kind of designed to help develop relationships. So uh, again, I'm just going to use my own school as an example. We had hobby day in our high school. It was kind of like show and tell, and it was so cool. Um, kids brought their horses to school. They brought their four-wheelers. Um, we had a student that was a, um, uh, a roller skating champion, and we never knew it. And so. It, they came and you know he came and did a demonstration. Um, so we did hobby day. We had a all school picnic. You know our, our advisory groups went out and had a picnic um, on that day. Um, it was just you know just a kind of an informal, more informal activities where the advisors got to know their students. The other thing with the teacher advisor program is that the students are usually um, assigned to advisory groups in a very heterogeneous way. So that students start to get to know students that they don't normally hang around with that are not in their crowd. Um, that was really good in our school to see how kids could start to develop relationships among peer groups, so different peer groups. So OK, so that's teacher advisor. Um, academic classroom integration, um, that's when classroom teachers um, uh, introduce a guidance concept um, as a real world, um, when they're solving real world problems. So 
um, example, I think I've given this one before, but when um, our ninth grade teachers were reviewing reviewing at the beginning of the year and they were going over how to take a, a, a mean, how to do an average, they applied it to the kids um, calculating their GPAs. And we actually sent the, a, a copy of the student's transcript into that math class and the kids assigned the quality points and calculated their GPA um, during the first semester of ninth grade, so we knew that they knew how to do that, and it applied to a math lesson. So, okay, community-based guidance. Um, this is where there are community organizations that are providing guidance activities, and um, we've coordinated that with your root causes at school. And then community-based counseling, where there's mental health organizations that are providing mental health services for students within the walls of the school. So it actually is a, mental, a community mental health initiative, it, but it's just physically happening inside the school. And then I see that my parent-based uh, guidance definition disappeared, but that's basically that we've provided guidance lesson plans to parents, uh, maybe through your PTA and um, the, or just through mailings to parents or whatever, or your, your um, uh, website. And so parents can do activities with their students as well. So those are the program delivery methods. So once you have an activity, like um, let's say an activity is to do a career interest inventory, then where are you going to drop that? Is that going to be dropped into the ninth grade teacher advisor program? Is that going to be dropped into, you know, the counselors are going to meet with students in English classes and do that? Um, you know, how is that, that going to happen? So just as a sample, this is actually my, when I was in the schools, um, this was my ninth grade program. Um, and um, you can see that, you know, we had, um, we were using lots of different delivery methods. So for just an example, um, in ninth grade, the counselor was doing these activities. In our ninth grade teacher advisor program, the emphasis was on awareness. We wanted to get acquainted with the ninth graders, teach them study skills right off the beginning, and to start doing a career exploration, which we thought would give them some uh, motivation for succeeding in school. Um, we had a vehicle, I won't talk much about this, but each student had a success portfolio where they dropped all their guidance activities and their academic work. Um, and then here's the lessons. So we had, what is that, um, 13 different guidance lessons that the teacher, the ninth grade teacher advisors did during advisory period. Um, and these were, you know, little 20, 30 minute lessons. They were nothing big, but um, each of the teachers across the, you know, across the school that were advisors for ninth graders did these activities. Then academic integration, here's the GPA calculation that I mentioned. Um, uh, writing assignment in English classes to compare and contrast post-secondary education options, community-based guidance. Um, we did not have any community-based counseling, although I really like that concept. But the community-based guidance, and then parent guidance, where um, parents would meet with their students, their children, to uh, provide guidance in terms of the four-year uh, high school course plan, and then to review their child's uh, four-year high school course plan. So, um, so that's you know this was ninth grade, and then we had another one for tenth grade, eleventh grade. So that's how it kind of all fits together, um, where you know we might introduce um, an activity with the counselor, but then reinforce it through the teacher advisor program or through a community-based guidance. Um, so, so yeah, so that's just kind of how the all the different methods fit together. Now, I really want to talk about this in a minute. I'm going to pause and, and see if you have questions. Um, the, we're going to give you the option of doing a one-year implementation or a four-year implementation. So in, I really would like to stress a lot that as you're designing your program, to think about doing a four-year implementation um, and to have it be a stepped implementation. So this would be one that, um, as we've worked with schools, um, might be common. So in this school, um, the, the, the lighter, I don't know what color that is, pink, orange, um, uh, the lighter color represents something that's already in place and is sustaining. So we already have counselor activities, so those are going to sustain. So nothing new there, or maybe a, you know, a few new activities, but nothing major. Then, here we're going to start developing the teacher advisor program. So in October, we developed the organizational structure. 
the next three months we're writing curriculum, then we're training the ninth grade teacher advisors, and then they're starting their, their implementation with a lot of, of support. Um, and then after that's in place, then it just sustains in future years. Now, we only did the ninth grade program next year. The year after that, we're going to do the implement the 10th grade program, then the 11th grade program, and then the 12th grade program. So in, in four years' time, we'll have all the curriculum developed. We'll have all the advisors trained. Um, it'll be a manner of just sustaining um, what, what we're doing and, and tweaking it, um, but nothing major, nothing that's going to be real expensive. Um, okay, so that's maybe going on, and then at the same time, we're starting to develop our community um, uh, organizational structure. So that's happening in October, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, how can we do this, you know, two things at once? Delegate. Remember, there's funding. We can ask people, would you like a part-time job? Um, in my school, um, I was very peripheral in the development of our teacher advisor program. Um, one of our math teachers kind of stepped up and said, I really like that idea, and you know, if you can kind of get it organized, I'll, I'll do the legwork to, de to develop the curriculum. And she did lots of research and got that all, all set. So, and, and another teacher said, okay, I'll do the 10th the, the grade program. So, and then uh, there was another group that, that really started working on, um, on the community-based guidance. So they set up an organizational structure, they started further recruiting uh, partners, trained the partners, and then they got off and running. And then notice that, you know, all this stuff starts sustaining. Then classroom integration, you might want to not do next year, but the year after next. So beyond next year, we're not asking you to do month by month detail. We're just asking you to tell us, okay, classroom integration, we're going to do that the year after next. Parent advisors, you're going to come the year after that. And then the very last year, we're really going to focus on sustaining um, um, without funding in, in the future. So, so that's how it all might fit together. Um, and just as a reminder, you can offer part-time jobs. If you've got enough funding, you can ask people you know, to help you develop this. So you become kind of a manager of the, the program development um, at this point. Um, or you could do it all yourself and, and you know, uh, provide a stipend for yourself as well. So, but again, after four years, you don't need money because the curriculum is all developed, all, everything's you know, written and all the materials are ready and, and you just go forward. So, okay, um, we are going to provide some professional development to help schools do this. It'll be over four years, but let me take some questions first, um, then we'll talk about the professional development. And I see, well, Debbie, do you have the questions there? I see at least one from Bridget. Yes, did you write the curriculum for all four years? Did I write it for all four years? I we yes, we had the curriculum for all four years. I did not write it all. Um, my I ended up writing a lot of the ninth grade curriculum, but we had other teachers that were writing other curriculum. Um, and all of the materials that we have, all of our lesson plans, we'll make available um, for schools that are continuing with us over the next four years. Um, as well as we'll start a database of lesson plans. Um, well, not start, we'll continue our database of lesson plans. Right now we have 250 lesson plans that could be used in an in a advisor by Z program, um, but that will grow as we involve more and more schools with this. Um, I might mention too on our activity descriptions for our community-based activities, I just looked at that this morning. We have now over 4,000 <laughs> different community activities that are happening throughout Indiana. Um, that you can search. I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So, other questions, Debbie? Nope, that's, uh, oh yes, one just came in from Karen. Where is the information or the video PowerPoints for meeting three? It isn't listed as being available on our RSC process page. I think she can get with me after the webinar. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Okay, um, so now, if you like this model, um, as you can imagine, it, it would be uh, save you a lot of time if you had someone that was kind of guiding you through this, um, if you wanted to use different delivery methods. Um, and again, this is not 
contingent upon doing Lily. The only nice thing about Lily is it provides you with some money. So, but if you've got money from a different source to help with technical assistance, you know, it doesn't have to be a Lily. And you may decide, I don't want to do a four-year implementation. I don't want to do um, different delivery methods. I want to just do the traditional thing. And that's fine, too. So we just want you to be knowledgeable about all options so that then you can make the, the, the selection that is the best for your school. OK. So this new initiative that we'll be guiding schools through in the next four years, um, we're calling Guiding All, all Kids. And um, what it is, is is a small cohort of schools. So in, in RSC, as you know, we, we designed RSC so it could go out to 2,000 schools. Um, but this is going to be a small cohort of schools that is going to meet as a learning community um, over a four-year period. Um, they'll have support from us. Um, and the schools will be designing um, and implementing and evaluating a school counseling system that involves uh, a variety of school counseling stakeholder groups um, who are using a variety of coordinated uh, activity delivery methods. So basically, let me go back to this. So we're, we're still in the, the stages of, of finalizing all this. But you know, next year, we'd be saying, OK, let's get to going with a teacher advisor program and a community, um, a community guidance initiative. And we'd help you, you know, we could help you create an organizational structure. We'd help you, um, you know, figure out who's going to design what. Um, we would set up, just like we have with RSC, kind of a structure for this. But then we would depend on you guys to make it fit for your school. So you might say to us, you know, we just do, there's no way we can do a teacher advisor program. Start it next year. We're going to postpone that for a year. And we want to spend all of our energy next year on developing a community-based guidance. So there will be that kind of flexibility in there. Um, we're kind of giving you the structure that you need when we think it would work best for you. Um, but just like RSC, um, you know, we can tweak that. And, and unlike what you're doing now, we have more than five months. <laughs> so so um, it won't be as, as fast and furious as it, as it was this year. Um, also, just remember that when you come into this, you're already going to have your root, your um, root causes identified, your goals identified, and um, and a lot of your activities identified. So you know we're not starting from scratch. This is just the next step that comes after the work that you've done this year. Okay. Um, so now we're going to have a, a workshop or a convening. Um, to further talk about all of this. It's going to be on April 12th. It'll be at the Crown Plaza in Indianapolis. Um, it'll be, it, it is going to be a workshop. We'll do some present, presenting, um, but then we'll give you some work time too. So if you want to come with two or three people and kind of talk through some of this, like, you know, with, like when we're talking about teacher advisor programs, we're, we'll give you some inquiry questions to think about. And then if you're there by yourself, you'd probably just, you know, journal or, you know, write down some thoughts, uh, answers to those questions. Um, but if you're there with a few other people, um, it, you know, that would be a time for you to kind of start talking about some of this. Um, we'll also further uh, explain um, the support that we'll be giving. Um, and um, yeah, and go from there. So, so that'll happen April 12th. Um, you can register if you just go to the RSC system. There's a registration link um, on the front page of RSC. We also put a step in on the activity or ex exploration section that went up this afternoon, um, so you can register for it um, for it there if, if you want to. And again, this is voluntary. If, you're, if none of this interests you, um, don't do it. But and, and that's fine with us. Um, but um, we do want to just to make sure that you're considering this type of implementation in, in addition to a traditional model. So OK. So I'm just curious. Um, let's do a real quick poll and just um, just to kind of give us some ideas of numbers um, so that we have a, a, a room that will facilitate um, the number of schools that we think are coming. So how likely are you to attend that meeting? And I'm going to launch that poll real quickly. Um, how likely here it is. And I'm launching. So yeah, so if you'll just go ahead and vote real quickly. The poll is in progress. 
and 10% of you have voted, 20% of you have voted. Okay, 75, 80% have voted. Okay, so we're seeing it's about half and half. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so we'll keep that in mind. Thank you for giving us that in input. Um, and oops, let's see, I can, I can show you the vote here, share. Okay, there's the results. Okay, so yeah, so we have about 45% that are either very likely or likely to attend. So that sounds great. So make sure you register, and if you want to bring a small team, that would be fine. Um, it's going to be lunch on your own, and um, and so you know be prepared for that. Um, yeah, so we'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Let's hide the poll, and good so debbie are we back to the powerpoint i always get mixed up at this point yep we're back to the powerpoint okay so let's talk about timeline i mentioned this um you'll have an option to do a one-year or a four-year implementation plan totally up to you um so if you want to just think about next year you're not needing for lily to think about you know the next four years a one-year implementation plan is fine um, in Gold Star RSC, we've always done just a one-year plan. Um, so this four years kind of um, uh, an extension of that, which which I think is really healthy. So, um, and again, if you want to do a four-year and you're not not interested in Lily, that that's fine as well. So totally flexible in all of this. Okay, just wanted to remind you that if you are doing a four-year plan, it can be a stepped implementation. So I I don't want you to feel overwhelmed that. You know, oh my gosh, I got to do all this stuff all at once. It'll be a step implementation at a rate that feels comfortable to you. So, okay. Now, just real quickly, if you would please give us some feedback. Um, what is your best guess at this point? If you're thinking about doing a um, a one year or a four year implementation, and I just launched that poll, so if everybody would vote in real quickly, that'd be good. Okay. Sue, so we do have one quick question. Okay. Uh, Julie says the data is a little problematic. Will there be another session? The data is problematic. Um, there, I don't think so. Um, but if you want to call me, we can talk about that. The we wanted to do this meeting face to face, um, and um, and to do that we have to rent a room, and I don't know if you've ever rented a room, but they're very expensive. So, but we can arrange something for you if you can't make that meeting. It might be just a phone call or whatever. So, um, yeah. So call me and we'll talk about that, or call Debbie and we can talk about that. Okay, so let me close this. So, okay, good, interesting. So, and here's the results. Looks like nobody is planning a one-year implementation. That kind of doesn't surprise me because I know that most of you, if not all of you, are planning on applying for the Lilly Grant. And 83% um, are, are planning to, do, to use a four-year implementation. That's really helpful for us to know. Uh, we're developing right now the technology to support that. So, um, good. So, we'll be ready for you. Okay. So now, um, one other thing. Remember we said you needed to think about the timeline, the, the delivery method, and the third thing was the providers. So in your next meeting, you're going to invite your council members um, to become partners with you or to find an organization that they are members of that could become a partner with you. And what a partner is, is, is just an organization that's going to volunteer to implement some of the activities. Um, so it may be, you know, that you have a, an industry that's at the table and they say, well, my gosh, we could certainly do job shadowing. Yeah, we'd love to do job shadowing. So now they're a partner and what they're going to provide is job shadowing. So there's the beginning of your community-based guidance. Remember, too, community-based guidance, it doesn't have to be like a whole program with, you know, that's comprehensive. It could just be that you've got a couple businesses that are going to do job shadowing. So they're, now they're partners with you. So, okay, so um, in the middle of this next meeting, we're going to say, you know, thank you so much for providing input. Kind of wondering if any of you know organizations that could become 
partners. Maybe it's your church or your place of worship or your business or your service club, Qantas or whatever. Um, in the, the 2016 schools have just gotten through this step, and I was amazed at how many organizations came to the table to say that they would be partners. Um, I just, I mean, it just really kind of warmed my heart to think that these people were, you know, community organizations were not only there to give you ideas, but they were at this point were so into it that they wanted to be part of the delivery. So um, I hope that happens for you too. So yeah, so that's kind of, well, that will happen in the in the next meeting. Okay, so let's look at uh, real quickly a, the walkthrough of the meeting, and um, and I'll pull up that PowerPoint. Any other questions, Debbie? As I'm doing this, nope, no other questions. And we do still see your poll right now. Oh, thank you very much. I always forget to do that. Well, shoot. Okay. Is it there? Is it closed? Yes, it's closed. And we do have a question from Angela who says, you might ask how many have conflicts on April 12th. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's, let's find out. That's a good idea. Thank you. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can do that right away, but let me see. Um, I don't know how to do that. I tell you what, let's do this. If I don't know how to do the technology on that part. Um, if you if you have a conflict, why don't you right after this meeting send Debbie a um, yeah, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna create a poll. Okay. Okay, now let me open it. Do you have a conflict on April 12th? Launch. Okay, there it is. Great, great idea. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's everybody vote on this one. So far, 41% have voted. Okay. While you're doing that, Debbie, can you get your calendar out? And um, I'm going to ask you to give me some dates in April. Yep. Hold on just a sec. So we figured we'd be missing spring break on that one. So let's just do this real quickly. So Debbie, are there other days that week that we, I don't know if you have this on your calendar, that we don't already have events on? I'm looking. Hold on just a sec. OK. Or we could just pull up. Let's see. That would be April 12th. That would be 10th, April. Okay, hang on here. Okay, here's the next one. I'm going to close this poll so you can see that 60% uh, of you had a, did have a conflict that that day. Okay, so now let's give you one more. Which is of that week? Uh, I'm going to change the question. Which is the best day for you? Um, Our calendar looks pretty free, but that doesn't mean that I have everything on it right now. Okay, so let's, so there's the, there's that week, and I probably should have 
put a, a none in there, but if you could vote real quickly on that one. So the 12th didn't work, which days will work? So 5% of you have voted, 14% have voted, Half of you have voted. Yeah, let's everybody vote in, please, because I, I don't want to move this unless it's, so we have some. Half of you have voted. Sixty-four percent of you have voted. Let's take another couple minutes. Those of you who are holding out, not minutes, seconds. Okay, here's what we're getting. Um, so it looks like the 13th is is the best. Okay, we'll we'll look at our calendars again. Um, I also will look at the possibility of doing this twice, but I don't think I can do that. Okay, okay, that's good. Thank you, thank you. That was a really good suggestion. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. Um, thank you. So let's go back. I'm just going to very quickly go through the council slides. Um, so view um, slideshow, current slide. Okay. So here's the council slides, and we're telling people we're going over all the review, and we're talking about how you know this, these are the products that we have from the process so far, and now we're looking at delivery methods and activities and then this month's tasks. So we're reminding people that there are four different kinds of activities and we're defining them. And then we're talking about this pyramid that activities address root causes. And then um, delivery method overview. So here's the delivery methods. There's kind of a sample where you can show people how this would all fit together, how you could have a step implementation. So your screen is, different. sorry, your screen is still on poll. Oh, shoot. There we go. Okay, so so far we're just kind of reviewing. Um, you're just telling people what we've already talked about today, um, that there's an opportunity for you all to um, learn more about, about uh, professional development for this type of uh, school counseling system. And now we're getting to the tasks. Okay, so you're telling people there's, there's four steps. Uh, we need to determine what our timeline, implementation timeline is going to be, our delivery methods, activities, and activity partners. Okay, excuse me. And now I see yep. a screen that says RSC 2017 first year. It's the white screen. Uh, why are we not? You should be seeing the PowerPoint. The polls closed. The polls... Yeah, nobody can see the PowerPoint. Okay, hang on. I don't know why that's happening. Let me manage polls. <sighs> okay, so right, no, let me. Are you seeing the results of that poll right now? We are seeing the polls, but then when you go to the other page, it's as if you as if the PowerPoint's not shared right now. So you don't see PowerPoint right now? No, no PowerPoint, just the 2017 first year. There you go, got it. Okay, that's weird. I don't know what happened there. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is everything up to now has been review. Then we're doing today's task. So there's four tasks. And timeline, we're just telling people one year or four year implementation plan. Um, and and you'll talk that out and people, you'll decide, do we want to do a one year implementation or a four year? Um, task two is the delivery method selection. And um, so the question is, how should we approach each of the delivery methods below? Should we implement it next year? Should we implement it in a future year? 
or should we park it for future consideration or should we just disregard it we're not interested at all so you'll just one by one just say okay should we do counselor based activities you know that's what that's traditional that's what we do yes we should continue that should we do a teacher advisor activity uh, teacher advisor delivery method and if so next year the year after do we want to do a stepped implementation you know if we have six grades in our elementary school do we want to do you know, first and second grade next year, third and fourth grade the year after that. How do we want to do that? So you just will kind of go through each of these delivery methods. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to select um, the activities for the, the coming year. So um, the question is, uh, what activities should we implement next year? So we're not worrying about anything but, but next year. So which activities should we implement to address each of the root causes? And the key question is, do we have sufficient activities to implement each priority goal and its root causes? And if not, should we delete the goal if we don't have you know, the time to put in activities in to address it? Should we revise the current activity or should we add a new activity? So, and then, um, so there on this one, we're looking at um, each priority goal. And then after we've looked at the priority goals, then we're going to look at the non-priority goals. And we're going to, again, ask the same question. Should we delete the goal? Should we uh, revise the current activity or add a new activity or um, just leave it in as a goal and, you know, knowing that down the road we're going to uh, address it? Um, question number three, does each of our current activities support at least one program goals? And if not, should we delete the activity or add a new program goal? Um, so here's how this will work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about, about priority goal number one. So on this screen, you, you've written, or on a poster on the blackboard, you've written to increase the percentage of students who, and then you're going to add all of your priority goals in here. And then you're going to identify this is an opportunity issue or this is a knowledge issue. So then, um, you, we're going to ask people to examine the, gro the goals crosswalk. And we're saying, are there, for this priority goal, for priority goal number one, let me go back. I think I misspoke there. So we've got priority goal number one. We've written the root causes here. I don't think I emphasized that. that um, this We're written the, the root causes here. Then for this one priority goal, which might be to increase the percentage of students who complete a FAFSA, for that one priority goal, then we're going to um, say, we're going to show people, here's the goals crosswalk. The goal will be written here. And then um, the activities that are associated with that goal will print. And then you're just going to simply say, do we need to omit any of these activities? Do we need to revise any of those activities? And then we'll say, OK, still in the same priority goal, do we need to add new activities? So we're going to review the activity parking lot that you put together last, last month. If you did, some schools will, some schools won't. We're going to brainstorm additional activities to address the priority goal. So um, they've done their homework. They've looked for activities. Now they're going to uh, um, you know, brainstorm ideas that they have to address that, that priority goal. And then we're going to to decide if each new activity, possible new activity, should be added or it should be parked. So this is a big brainstorm. So we're saying, okay, here's our priority goal to increase the percentage of students who um, take one of take an ABIB or dual credit course. That's our priority goal. And here's all the activities that we have in place already. Do we get rid of any or do we tweak any? Um, and then we say, do we want to have any new activities to address that priority goal? And people brainstorm. And um, and then after they've brainstormed their activity ideas, then you just go through and say, okay, are we going to add any of these? And do we want to park any of them to consider later? So, okay. Now, the last four slides that we saw, you would replicate for each of your priority goals. And we're only talking about priority goals that you're addressing next year. So if you're doing a four-year implementation, we're only looking at the priority goals for next year. We're not, at this point, we're not going to look into the future years. We'll do that um, at the end of next year. So, okay. Um, 
So that's kind of how we're looking at the priority goals and getting our list of activities for each of the priority goals. Then we're kind of going to do the same thing for the non-priority goals. We're going to say, um, here's a report, it's the goals crosswalk, and the steering team has flagged non-priority goals that we'd like to give just a little bit of an emphasis to next year. They're not priority, but we want to just kind of think about them a little bit. So we've looked at all of the non-priority goals, and we've looked at the activities in this report, and then we're saying which activities should be omitted, if any, which should be revised, and then same thing, are there any new activities for these non-priority goals that we're just going to give a little bit of an emphasis to? Are there any new activities that we should be considering? So, okay. Um, so again, when they get this report that has um, the goals crosswalk for the non-priority goals, there will be all the non-priority goals in here. You're just going to star the ones that you want them to think about um, because there's a little bit of a um, you want to put a little bit of an emphasis on them. Okay, then um, finally the next report we're going to show people is the activities crosswalk. This will list all the activities that you have right now and it will flag the activities that do not support any of your goals. And then the question is, why are we doing these activities? So you would want to discuss, you know, should we get rid of the counselor back to school lunch because it doesn't really align with any of our goals? Or maybe there's a goal we haven't really thought about yet. So we want to make sure that all of your activities are married to goals. And if not, then we want to think about, could we save time by getting rid of that activity? So, okay. So, um, so just to summarize that section, I know I went through pretty quickly on that. You're, you're studying your non-priority goals, finding activities to align with them, then, then you're studying some, some targeted non-priority goals, just things that you want to pay attention to a little bit, and you're looking for activities for those. And then the third step of that section is to look at your activities to see are there any activities that don't align with our goals and then why are we doing them? Let's get rid of them. So okay, I'll show you how to get those reports in a second. And then finally, the last task is looking at um, your partners. Would any of the organizations which you belong to be interested in becoming partners in our work to help students? Um, and then the definition of partner is going to implement counseling activities or guidance activities. Okay, and then here's some examples. Um, and final check. So this is really important. After you've had all this discussion, this discussion's a little messy. You're trying to kind of figure out, okay, here's all of our goals. Here's the activities we're going to either tweak or add or adjust to make sure that each of our non-priority goals and our, our targeted, each of our priority goals and each of our targeted non-priority goals um, are, are being addressed appropriately. But now the very last thing is we want to come back to think, are we overextending our counselors. And so on this screen, this these are your time task goals that we did in, in the resources step. And then we're going to just say, okay, given the time available, available, are all those activities that we have planned for next year even realistic? Can we do all of those? If you are starting to feel nervous at this point, you need to speak up and to say to folks, you know, this would be, I'd love to do all that stuff, but I'm spending 60% of my time on non-program, I can't do it all. And now let's go back and let's weed out the activities that maybe aren't as important to us. Or maybe even weed out a, a non-priority or, or priority goal if you don't have time to address all of that. So again, this is just kind of, it's almost like putting together a puzzle at this part. Which, which priority goals do you have? What are the activities that are going to address them? Um, and which activities can you get rid of? So, okay. Um, and then finally, we also want to remind people that we have limited resources, you know, funding, um, our, our counselor to student ratio, and just to ask, given the available resources, are the activities that we have planned realistic? And again, this is your chance to say yes or, or no. So, okay, and then finally, the consensus check, can we live with these activities and can we support them publicly? Okay, I'm going to go to the online system. I know I'm slightly over. We're look at that real quickly and then we'll close. Debbie, any questions as I'm looking at this?
Yes, Julie asks, are we listing all the root causes or just the top vote getters from the Instagraph? Um, up to you. Um, in terms of listing all of the root causes, we're only going to focus on root causes for priority goals that you are going to address next school year. So if some of your priority goals you're doing in you know future years, we're not, not going to worry about that and we won't worry about activities yet to address those goals. Now, in terms of, let's say you have three priority goals that you're going to address next year, and they have, between the three of them, there are 92 different root causes. If that's the case, I would only talk about the ones that are that got the, the most votes on the, on the Instagram. I'd, I'd narrow that down. Um, we're recommending a three-hour meeting on this one, uh, so it's more like a workshop than a kind of a quick meeting, because you really need to dig in at this point. We're designing the program, um, but even so, you know, you probably won't be able to come up with the activity to address 96 different root causes. So, so yes, you've prioritized and you've come down to the main ones that you want to really spend your time talking about how we're going to address these things. Good, good question. Other questions, Debbie? Yes, Angela asks, where did the non-priority goals come from? Are those the same as the program goals? And then that's all. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So here, we used to not do that, but here's what would happen. So we used to just say, let's just focus on activities for the priority goals, and then let's look at activities and make sure that everything's aligned with, with a, some kind of goal, priority or non-priority. And what happened was is that counselors would tell us, you know, I have these 14 priority goals, but there's this other thing that I really want to do a little bit. It's not a priority goal, but we want to beef it up a little bit. And we didn't have any way to incorporate that into our process. So if there are non-priority goals, and to answer your question, those are the goals, those are the goals that you have that are not priority. So, so uh, with all of your goals, all 70 goals, each each goal is either a priority goal or a non-priority goal. Um, so non-priority goals are a subset of all of your goals, the ones that are not getting priority. <laughs> um, okay, so but this way you don't have to do anything with the non-priority goals if you don't want to. But if you do have something that wasn't a priority goal but you want to just explore it a little bit and get a few little, little activities in for it, um, this would give you a way to do it. If If you don't want to look at your non-priority goals at all, you just take that slide out and, and not do that step. So totally up to you. This is a part where it's really kind of, it's, it's a little bit messy, and I think each of you will figure out the best way to make this uh, apply to you. Uh, um, the, the main thing is that your non-priority goals for next year, we want to make sure get hit well with activities. Other questions, Debbie? Nope, that's it. Thanks. Okay, let's look at the manual real quickly. There's one thing I want to show you in the manual. Um, so if I'm going down to activities, um, here's that pre-meeting mailing. So I'm going to open that up and just show you what it looks like. This can be this would go can go out as a paper memo, um, or it can. Um, um, it can go out as a paper memo, or you can cut and paste it into an email to your council members. But basically, we're reminding the council, here's our priority goals, here are the root causes, so you've typed those in there. Um, and then before the meeting, we're asking people to think about activities that, they, that you could do or they could do to help address those root causes. And we're giving them two different resources. Um, here's a school counseling activity search, and here's a community-based um, activity search. There's about 215 guidance lessons in this counseling activity search and there's like 4,000 in, in, in this community-based. Um, so let me real quickly, let's paste this in here so I can show you what this looks like. So when they look come in, here's the, the search tool. So I may go in and say, show me activities around FAFSA because that aligns with one of our nine priority goals, or one of our priority goals. And I get 287 activities. And now you're going to say, well, let's narrow that down a bit. So maybe I'm from the public library. 
I can say in here, um, show me what public libraries are doing around FAFSA, and I can search again, and here I've got nine different activities that are being done around Indiana um, uh, by libraries um, to help kids understand and, and submit FAFSA. So each of your community organizations, what I hope they'll do is do this drop down, find an you know an organization that's like them, and um, you know, and then just search. And so I'm going to search for faith-based around FAFSA. I don't know if I'll get anything. Yep, two two different community-based uh, faith-based organizations are doing things um, that will help kids uh, apply for the FAFSA. So yeah, so just a, a way for your community organizations to get ideas. Um, okay, so I wanted to point that out. And then on the process page, I won't spend much time there, but um, if I scroll down here to, there's the exploration that we just did. And here is select your delivery methods and activities. So this will, you're going to enter your current delivery methods enter your current activities, enter your current partners. Then you're going to uh, start printing the crosswalk reports. And those are the reports that you'll need for your, for your meeting. Um, then you'll conduct the, the meeting. And then after your meeting, you'll come down to the next step. So this is how you get the reports out, the crosswalks that you need for the meeting. And, um, and then this is uh, where you'll come down after the meeting. So after the meeting then you're going to update your partners, update your delivery methods, update your activities, and then you're going to check the crosswalks again. And um, you're also, this is another crosswalk that aligns all of your activities with the Indiana School Counseling Competency Indicators. Remember that you have to address all of those indicators um, uh, in order to earn the Gold Star Award. Uh, you check your calendar, and then when you're happy with all of this, you'll submit all of these program activities um, as a whole to Debbie, and she'll look over these crosswalks too, and she'll just make sure that everything looks aligned and um, you know that we're we're good to go. So okay, um, when you're entering activities, um, I'm going to let's see, enter current activities, update activities looks the same way so I'm going to enter current activities and in here this looks kind of like what you used last month so you went to this page to enter your parking lot activities now I'm going to actually enter my current activities so I'm going to enter here and um, here's the um, this we're saying this is an active activity title description activity type um, activity purpose, this is to meet either one of your program goals or to meet an, ex an, an external requirement. So if you click meet your current goals, then um, the school doesn't have their goals in here yet, but um, when you open this up, there'll be a list of your current goals and you'll just, you'll just check the ones that this activity is going to meet. So this is specific to your school. If you click that you're doing this to meet an external requirement, then you'll say this is a district requirement, it's some other requirement, or it's Indiana Gold Star. And if you do Indiana Gold Star, then you'll see that um, that the next question comes up that gives you all of the competency indicators, and then you just check off the ones uh, that that activity addresses. And then the crosswalk report will work, you know, combine all this information, and it will give you a flag on which indicators you're you're you haven't hit yet. Okay, so that's that um, grade level um, for the activity student groups. Um, at least one of your uh, groups needs to be a, um, a a gap group, so that you can show that your school counseling program is working to. Uh, to make guidance gaps go away. And then here is your implementation dates. This will create the calendar. Um, so if it's, if the implementation is 2017-18, we're asking you to write, uh, to indicate which months it happens in. 
If it's beyond next year, you can also just click to be determined. So you don't have to have a month or a, a month um, to, to, to if it's ne beyond next year. Then you're going to say um, what delivery methods you're going to use. Um, the school has not selected their delivery methods yet, so nothing's in here. But once they do, um, you should just check teacher advisor program or whatever. And same thing with activity providers. They haven't entered their providers yet. After they do, um, all the providers will appear here, and they'll just check the provider. And then who's um, responsible for making sure that this activity gets done? And you can just type somebody's name in there. After you've entered their names, then their, their names will start to appear. So, okay, so that's getting an activity in. One thing that's important, I'm going to go back to the process page. Um, the You'll notice that um, we've said that steps two to four should be completed in, in order. Same thing up here. Um, we want to make sure that these steps are done in order um, so that um, when you go to enter those activities, you already have the partners in. So, okay. I think that's it. That's real quick. Um, so this is where it all comes together. All the research, all the design, um, all the, the data collection and the study that you've done, the self-studies. We're now to the point where we're ready to put it together. So, okay, let's take questions. And I, I apologize. I know I'm way over lots of content to talk about today. Um, so, Debbie, any other questions? No, I think we've got them all answered. Thank you, Sue. Okay, very good. Again, my apology for going over. Please, if you do have a question, we haven't given you adequate time to ask it today. Um, follow up with Debbie tomorrow, and and, um, um, and we'll go from there. So thanks, everybody, and um, it is a pleasure. Uh, the next time we meet, we'll we'll really be talking about um, uh, the things that you need to do to finalize your implementation plan and to put a budget to it. So okay, sounds good, and. We'll talk to you all later. Thanks, everyone.